the work done with uh, Alessandro, recent work. Um, so we have been talking what about putting some light in a literal way. Light, exactly, literal way, <laughs> putting some light. Yes, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we have heard that, I mean, now we have higher order calculations for DMDs, for devolution, for the matches, for, so it's time to, in, to think about QED corrections already in the QED world. So this is what we did. Um, well, so this is the, the outline of the talk. I will motivate a bit why we care about these QED corrections, why we should care. Uh, we will review briefly DMDs in QCD. This already appeared in other talks, but I will remind you again the main formulas. Then I will define uh, also the definition of the TMDs in QCD cross QED, so an extended theory. And from that, I will be able to calculate the QED corrections to, um, to basically to the, to the anomalous dimension of the TMDs and the JD, the colleagues over uh, And then I will also show you the uh, QED corrections to the, to the Wilson coefficient of the unpolarized TMD period. Okay. So this is the plan, this will work. Okay, so why do we care about QD corrections? Um, well, first of all, I will say I would say why not? I mean, formally, it's interesting. <laughs> formally, it's interesting. Uh, I mean, we don't always need to wait for experiments. Theory can go faster, so it's, this is a very interesting thing to think about. Uh, people in the one-dimensional world thought about this, uh, I mean, progressively more in the last year. So, so why not in the 3D case? But of course, I mean, the, the main goal always is to push the theoretical prediction, the theoretical uh, precision, because we want to extract non perturbative information. So the better we know the perturbative, the better. And currently, as I said before, the, the TMD evolution is known almost up to next to next to next to leading log. It's really accurate. Um, and the Wilson coefficients for the, for the TMDs at large PD uh, at NNLO for several TMDs. So they, they the accuracy in QCD is really high, so it's time to think of QD corrections. Um, and also there have been several uh, improvements in the, in the one-dimensional sector, or PDFs. So a few people calculated the QD corrections to Diglab kerdans uh, uh, for the evolution of the PDFs, and also the photon PDF is getting some attention lately. Uh, photon inside protein. Yes. No, the photon as a, as a parton instead of proton. Uh, and just, I mean, since later on we, I will use it, this, this is the notation I will use for, for the perturbative uh, coefficients for any function. I will use this notation with two indices. The first one is uh, alpha strong, the second one is alpha. So that's it. Okay, so let me motivate a bit uh, uh, why do we care about QED corrections. So in the, in the one-dimensional world, uh, um, recently, uh, these guys here, I mean, um, Herman, Herman and, and Daniel, they calculated the QD corrections to Tickler kernels up to um, order alpha is alpha, so the mixed ones, and alpha is squared. Okay, so they, they calculated the corrections to the, to the quark and gluon kernels, and also they included the, the, the photon kernels and the lepton kernels as well. So all these ingredients are known at a very high level. This is just, uh, this is by, by Herman, uh, just to show you what is the numerical impact of these uh, corrections uh, to the kernels. Uh, so here they, they were showing uh, these kind of ratios of the, the, of the kernels normalized to the, to the linear other ones, which are the combination of the QCD and QED. Uh, so what you can see, well, this is like the QCD one, and it is multiplied by 10 to minus three. All the rest are the QED uh, corrections. So they are basically per mil. Correction. Let's do have a number in mind. It depends on the X region. Could be larger at the smaller X or larger X. Uh, but basically, per mil. Still at LHC. I mean, I'm not showing this here, but at LHC, the, these are the already now important. And of course, for the future, it will be. And for the EIC, probably, oh, yeah, probably they will be potentially, because we will need precision. Um, then another thing I commented on was the, the photon PDF. Um, so the photon PDF has been there, the, the photon inside the proton, as a parton, uh, has been there for a few years since, since this first uh, uh, yeah, work by, by Christian and, and company. Um, uh, so there are, I mean, the, the photon PDF already appeared in several uh, feeds of different groups. 
uh, with different assumptions or models or dividing the photomedic in elastic in elastic or whatever, or just no separation, just a fit. But this has been going on uh, lately. So there is an increasing interest on the photon PDF. Uh, and these guys here, this, I mean, this is one of the approaches. Uh, it's called Lux QED. This is yeah, recently derived by these, these guys. Uh, they have like a new way of getting the photon PDF from the ideas of structural functions. Um, actually, this was disappeared before, but I think it appeared by Christian and Smith, but there is some issue that we can discuss that later. But actually, this is, this is a, long, a long story. But anyway, so the, the idea is that they, they devise an imaginary BSM uh, uh, process where uh, we have a, like a heavy lepton that interacts with a lepton and a photon. So in this, with this uh, process, they can write, or, or, well, they write the cross-section in two ways. So uh, using the DIS structure functions, F2 and FL, and they also write it in, the, in terms of the photon PDF in collinear factorization. So by relating these two ways, they can write the photon PDF in terms of the DIS structure functions, and this would be the result they get. So you see the photon PDF in terms of F2 and FL. Okay. So if we know F2 and uh, an FL, we can calculate the photon PDF from there. So we don't fit it. We just use F2 and FL uh, uh, yeah, fits already there. So the better we know these guys, the better we, we can know the photon PDF. So EIC actually could help a lot uh, in, in measuring uh, the, the DI structure functions more precisely. Um, this is by, by Julia. Um, so here you can see uh, so this is a comparison of the photon PDF extracted from NMPDF uh, to three with this uh, uncertainty. And this is the, uh, the quark, uh, the app PDF. And here you see the extraction done with this uh, method, the LuxQED, so the LuxQED, and you see that the uncertainty gets really uh, reduced. And actually, they claim that the, the photon now is the, the best known part of the, in the project with this new approach, but well, this is their work. Uh, similar comparisons uh, can be done with other uh, um, photon PDFs in other, in other fits. And basically the idea is that uh, uh, by knowing the DI structure functions, one can constrain the photon PDF very nicely. Yeah, so yeah, so as I said, the, the IC could really help with this. Is it trivial to see that the evolution of that photon is um, consistent with the evolution equations? The evolution? I mean, you have the evolution here, and you have the photon distribution computed by it. It's actually, they, they say that I mean, with this formula, you can recover the d glap kernels computed by the floor. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, exactly, up to yeah, alpha squared and, and the mixed ones. That's question, right? Actually, it's, it's a nice cross-check, actually. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and then let me, let me see. Okay, another thing to, to motivate why we care about this QD correction. So recently, this gentleman here uh, uh, tried to include the QD corrections to the set boson PT distribution of the LHC and, and Tevatron. Uh, so they, bas they basically, uh, when they use their formalism and they include the QD corrections, uh, and they find that uh, the, the, the impact of these QD corrections is between one and 4%, more or less. Uh, so they are not negligible, they are there. So for the precision that is needed at the LHC, they are relevant to some extent. So what, what we did is to um, uh, consider that, the, of course, I mean, these guys don't consider TMDs as we do in, in the operator form. Uh, so we take the TMDs right from the start, from the operator definition, and we uh, calculate the QD corrections to the revolution. Um, and I mean, not only for the amplifiers, but for all TMDs. Actually, these QD corrections will be universal for all TMDs. Uh, they, they will break the flavor universality in QCD. Uh, because they will depend on the charge of the, of the parton. But anyway, they are, I mean, the, the form is the same for TMDs, polarized, unpolarized, PDFs, or fragmentation functions. So this is what I want to show you. But first, let me review TMDs in QCD just briefly, uh, so that we can, we have the, the formulas in, in our mind. So if I take Drelian, you know this, uh, the cross-section can be factorized in this way. Um, where we have a hard part and collinear soft and anti-collinear matrix elements. They are given here. You know, this, the collinear is given by a bilocal quark operator, separated in the light cone direction and in the transverse. Uh, we have, of course, the, the needed Wilson lines to, to connect these, these two points. 
and the soft factor is uh, Wilson loop. So, okay, these this results we know. Then there is the story of how to define the TMDs. Uh, and the story here is that uh, we can see that the collinear soft and anticollinear modes, they have uh, the same invariant mass. So when we uh, calculate them in perturbation theory, we need to impose some uh, rapidity cutoffs. And these rapidity cutoffs introduce rapidity divergences. Uh, so uh, in the full cross section, these divergences disappear. So there's a way to combine the collinear and soft matrix elements to get rid of these divergences. So this, this brings us the, the, the proper definition of TMDs as the combination of square root of soft factor and the collinear matrix element. Uh, the, the, actually, I mean, the arbitrary splitting of the soft function in two pieces, this is what brings the, the, the rapidity evolution. The divergences disappear, but of course, the, 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 the scale there is, is a remnant of the, of the splitting. Um, okay, so this is QCD. This is the known story. In QCD, we have the, I mean, the evolution equations for the TMDs. Um, so they depend on two scales, the renormalization scale and the, the rapidity scale. Um, so in QCD, the evolution in, in mu is given by, by the anomalous dimension. It has the cusp piece and the non-cusp. And these guys are known analytically up to three loops and very recently up to four loops uh, numerically. Uh, although these guys claim that uh, this approximation is good enough for all collider experiments. So we know these guys at four loops, which is pretty high, okay? And the, the dependence on the rapidity scale uh, is given by the D function or the, the, the K twiddle or the college super kernel. Uh, and this is related to the Casper anomalous dimension. Uh, the CASP doesn't fix completely the D because you need some finite piece. This would come from a calculation of the soft function itself. But anyway, the, the, the CASP is not at four loops. So, so we know the D at four loops almost. So it's uh, really high as well in QCD. So this is what we know in QCD. Now, we know that TMDs can be uh, written in terms of um, their collinear counterparts. I mean, here by T, I mean any TMD, polarized, antipolarized, fragmentation, PDA, whatever. Um, all of them will have, I mean, the corresponding uh, integrated one-dimensional um, counterpart on a given coefficient. So they can be written in this way and with the, the, the evolution. Here I use, where I show the evolution uh, with a given path for path dependence referred to in Yachel and Alexei's work. Um, but anyway, I mean, the general philosophy here is to, uh, we only want to parameterize what cannot be calculated okay, in general. Uh, we know that the number of part of the D is universal, which is, uh, this helps in phenomenology. Um, and of course, the higher order calculations allow for a better determination of the non-perturbative. So this is the goal. The better we know the perturbative, the better we can isolate the non-perturbative part. Um, so, yeah. So this is the goal, to, to, really, to really have a precise calculations of the perturbative uh, ingredients. So now I go to QCD cross QED. So, um, so let's think again of Drelian, okay, where the two quarks, the, yeah, QQ bar that collide, they can also uh, yeah, exchange a bit photos, not only ones. So in this case, this is how we would define our collinear or unsubtracted TMD and the, and the soft factor. So basically, we have the same, the same operator, I mean, the bilocal quark operator, uh, where we have the, the, the previous gluon gauge links, but also photon gauge links, photon Wilson lines, just like that. And they have the same, they, they are the same as the gluon gauge links. Uh, here you have here an, an, an example. I mean, if this were the, the, the collinear gluon Wilson line, this will be the, the photon version of it. Uh, <clears throat> there is no path ordering. Uh, this is abelian, and this behavior is the, the photon uh, field. And okay, this is the charge okay, of, the, of the considered part. So just by including these Wilson lines, we have our operators extended to QCD QED theory. Uh, so this is how they should be defined. Of course, this can be extended to all TMDs. Polarized and polarized is in the same way. Just writing the proper uh, gamma plus minus or whatever is needed, okay? So these are the TMDs in QCD cross QED, and from this we can calculate now the corrections. Uh, the evolution equations for the TMDs, uh, I mean, they are, they are the same, I mean, similar than, than in pure QCD, but here I'm writing uh, <clears throat> that the numerous dimension now, I mean, it depends on, on, on the two couplings, strong and electroweak, and the same 
the D. Okay. Uh, we didn't distinguish between QCD and QCD scales just to, to make it simpler, but one could make it like, two, two renormalization scales and two rapidity scales. You don't gain much. Um, as I said, the QD corrections, as I will show now, uh, they break flavor universality. Uh, they depend on the charge of the parton. Uh, now, another thing is that, uh, I mean, you, you have to wonder, I mean, if you want to resum blocks, you need to, to, to establish some relation between alpha strong and alpha, because, uh, yeah, you, I mean, you want to resum quantities of the same order, or, but this is complicated because the, the um, as, I mean, the TMD is uh, resumed in, in equal parameter space, so usually the resumption scale depends on B. So these scales change, so it's, it's not easy to establish a relation between alpha strong and alpha. Uh, but okay, this we will see later. I mean, this, this is important for phenomenology. Uh, what could take them equal at all scales, like that, or with some uh, different contributions independently, like the QCD contributions or the mixed ones or the QD ones, with different towers of blocks. Um, so I want to show you how to get all these contributions, uh, the QD corrections uh, from the QCD ones, because we know the QCD results, from that we can get the QD corrections. So I will start from the, the corrections to the D term and then the anomalous dimension. So for the D term, uh, this, the D function can be calculated from the soft function uh, directly. So this is the extended definition of the soft function with the, with the QCD gauge links and the QED gauge links. So at in order in, in QED, we, we basically have I mean, the, the analogous calculation is in QCD, but just the photon instead of a gluon. Here, the double lines represent gluon gauge links and the, the dashed double lines, the, the, the photon gauge links. So this will be the result for the soft function. And from this, we can derive, we can get the, the, the D uh, term uh, uh, in QED. So this is basically given by the, the, the CASP in QED, which is for the charge squared. Instead of 4CF, would be in, in QCD for uh, charge square. So this is one result. Um, the QD corrections for the D term at next to in order. Um, the form of the D is the same as in QCD. Okay, here I'm writing 0, 2. So this is alpha square, not alpha is square. But it is the same as in QCD, where all these pieces are replaced by the QED versions. Um, so it's easy to obtain these guys from, from QCD. Um, this D, the D at, at uh, LT equals 0. This is like the finite piece of the D term. In QCD is given by this expression here. Uh, and in QED, we just need to kill the CA because QED is abelian. Uh, and here we have, uh, we, we change this, this here by, by a charge square and this framing loop by framing and lepton loop. So this will be the, the, the final piece of the D uh, at two loops in QED. And for the Casper normal dimension, which appears here uh, uh, in QED, so this is the QCD result, and from this, again, we can get the QED uh, version of it. So we kill the CA, and this goes, this Fermi loop goes to Fermi loop. Uh, of course, and the loop. So you mentioned what kind of are you using Kruger? Yeah. I mean, formally all of them. I mean, in a loop, you can have yeah, you can have all of them. But I would say you go into the background and We didn't do any of this. This will come. This will be just formal. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, here if you see the D function <coughs> involves the beta, uh, the QED beta function. So let me show you. Uh, the results for the beta function, these are known for some time. So we have the QCD beta function and the, and the QED beta function is beta hat, okay? Of course, both depend on corrections from the other theory. And this will be the, the, the okay, yeah, the results of, of the coefficients, I mean, the mixed coefficient and the ones in, in, in QED. So the mixed for the QCD beta function, this is the mixed for the QED beta function, and these are the, the QED uh, alpha and alpha squared. So this, these are the results. This has been known for some time. Um, now let me tell you what happens with the D at mixed order. So alpha is alpha. So the soft function basically, I mean, in this case, QCD, QD extended version can be effectively factorized in, into uh, factors. 
we can write it as a, like a QCD soft factor and a QD soft factor. And this expression includes all terms uh, uh, up to, I mean, all the, all the QCD correct, all the QCD terms, all the QED terms, and also the, the first mixed term, the alpha is alpha. So from this and the fact that we know that the, the, the logarithm of the soft function is linear in the, in the rapid regulator, so we're not going to details with this, but uh, one can argue that the, the miscorrection to the D is uh, zero, basically because the corrections are decoupled in the soft function. So there is no mixed correction to the D term. Okay. And I go to anomalous dimension. For anomalous dimension, uh, so the calculation is the same as in, in, in analogous to the one in QCD. Um, so we need to calculate the virtual corrections to the uh, unsubtracted matrix element and for the soft function. So from the resulting QCD, we can just by changing charges and factors, we can get the resulting QED for the non-CASP or for the CASP, this I already showed before. Uh, two loops in, sorry, the, the miscorrection, the QCD, QED uh, uh, for the anomalous dimension, uh, again from the QCD result, this is the two loop uh, uh, non-CASP. Uh, so we kill the CA, we also uh, see that we cannot have like fermion loops at this order, uh, at this order, at this mixed order. So this is what remains. This is the result for the non cast but uh, alpha is alpha. We also need to put a factor of two compared to the result in QCD because when we re replace two internal gluons by a gluon and a photon, there are two ways that we can do that. So there's a factor of two. So that's the result. For the, this I should, uh, I mean, this is uh, so the, the miscorrection correction to the cast anomalous dimension again from the cast uh, at two loops. Uh, the miss one we get zero because there are no fermion loops at this order. Okay, alpha is alpha. That cannot be. So uh, the mix correction to the cast is zero, and actually this is consistent with uh, some other works. Um, and the pure QED corrections to the anomalous dimension are two loops. Uh, so from the resulting QCD. Uh, this is what we would get uh, in QED, um, just by, by changing factors properly, uh, color factors, answer factors, uh, and the cast at, uh, at two loops in QED, this would be the result. So we have everything. I think this is the, yeah, I wrote the summary. Uh, so at order alpha, this would be the corrections to the D and the normal dimension, the non-cast and the cast, at the mixed order and at order alpha square. So, this is, these are all the new results. Now we're talking about gluon TMD, because this was for quark TMDs. For gluon TMD, uh, the gluon TMD in QCD, because QD is defined as in QCD, because the gluon operator is already uh, uh, QD gauge invariant, so we don't need photon with lines. Um, so QD effects only appear at higher orders. Um, so actually, uh, there are no pure QED corrections because we always need to involve some fermion loop. So we always need some alpha S. So there are no pure, pure QED corrections to the anomalous dimension of the D for gluons. And the mixed QCD QED corrections would come basically from this diagram. There are no contributions from the soft function because the soft function doesn't contribute to disorder. There are no diagrams. Um, so from the result of the anomalous dimension in uh, QCD, at two loops, we can get the one at the, the alpha is alpha, and the mixed one. Uh, so this will be the result, basically I mean from this term, just killing the CA. So this, this would be it for the soft, for the gluon TMDs. This is the summary for gluon TMDs. Um, so there are no corrections at order alpha, there are no corrections at order alpha square, which will add any alpha, pure, pure QD correction. The mixed one appears, uh, I mean, the mixed one only appears for the non cast piece. So for gluon TMD, this is much simpler. Okay, so I show you the results for the, uh, the operator product expansion of the amplarized TMD PDF. Uh, so in QCD, we know that TMDs, as I said before, uh, can be refactorized in terms of uh, the integrated counterparts. And there is I mean, one OPE for, for every TMD, for example, the, the, the gluon helicity has its own coefficient, the, the, the gluon C versus the of kind of two external matrix elements. Okay, so for its TMD, we have an operator product expansion. Currently, we know these coefficients for the amplarized quark and gluon TMD distribution and affirmative functions at next to next to the order. 
Also, we know them at NLO for uh, transmission for ISTM disk. There is some more work uh, going on uh, by Niachon collaborators. So we know these guys at higher orders. So let me show you the corrections for just for the amplifiers for team degree. So again, this can be obtained from the QCD results uh, easily. Um, so um, the QD corrections to the core core channel uh, would be this. I mean, this is this calculation is the same as in QCD. We just changed the, the basically CF by the chart to square. So this would be the correction. So this would be the diagrams. I mean, the calculation is, is the same as in QCD. It's replacing blues by photons. There is no particular difficulty here. And the same for the photon PDF contribution to the quark amplorized TV degree F. So uh, this is like a, a new channel. So the photon PDF we contribute to the quark TMDPDF through this coefficient. Uh, and compared to the um, quark gluon uh, coefficient, there is a factor in C due to, to, to the multiplicity, to the color multiplicity of the quark here. Um, so I'm not sure, but this is consistent with, with these guys right in their own formalism. So this will be the coefficient. Um, okay. So I get to the conclusions. Um, so theoretical precision is needed at the electron ion collider and beyond for any um, experiment to properly extract non-perturbative physics. So the better we know the, the perturbative ingredients, the better we can constrain the non-perturbative. Um, the AC will better measure the DA structure functions. So using this, this uh, method, one can better constrain the photon PDF. This is nice. Um, so we obtain these QD corrections to the evolution and the particular expansion. And in the same way, one can calculate the corrections to other uh, TMD uh, Wilson coefficients. Um, so I, can, I think we can fairly say that the TMD community is catching up with the PDF community now, this theoretically. Uh, so we have many pieces at higher orders. And okay, to do is, uh, uh, we, we have to do some numerical study of the, of the impact of these corrections. So this will, this will come. At least these guys find that for set boson, the corrections are a few percent. So they are not irrelevant. And that's it. Thank you.